bit of introductions and everyone's role within the party. Uh, I guess, uh, Candice, we can start with you and just go around the room. Sure, thank you, Tomas, and thank you for having us on this interview this morning. I am Candice Sellis. I am the GOP president for the NMI Republican Party. And with us, we have our young and vibrant vice, Shane Villanueva, along with our hardworking campaign manager, also young and vibrant, Will Castro. <laughs> Gentlemen. Okay, day. All right, uh, I think we'll just go ahead and dive in. Uh, you had your kickoff event. Uh, we received uh, the, the release of, uh, you know, hundreds of people attending. Uh, can you tell us uh, what your hopes are in launching uh, this headquarters and uh, what are some of the priorities um, for the next uh, few weeks uh, after this launch? Uh, just real quick, Prez, it was a, it was a blessing. Uh, the kickoff will be announced. And so with that said, it was a great turnout, Prez. Is de most definitely, we had a great turnout at our HQ. Um, we are excited that our HQ was blessed and we look forward to doing the work for the people leading up to the November elections. Yeah, so Thomas, uh, we had, um, you know, we had over 400 people there, so diverse. A lot of, of course, our original uh, uh, party uh, members and, a lot of new ones. Uh, we actually tried to see, you know, because of COVID, we tried to set a limit. Um, and uh, so we had to almost rotate people in and out, but yeah, it was great. It was, it was amazing. Um, and we have a really nice location located right there on the corner of Garapan, right next to the beach area, so. Yeah, absolutely. And if I can add, uh, the president hinted at it. There was a diverse community, Tomas. I, I was polling everybody there, being new, the newest face to the team. And about a third of the folks in attendance were actually new faces from the Filipino community, the Palawan community, and the Chukis community. And so we're very encouraged by that. And uh, it is a divisive uh, political time. Uh, there is uh, the impeachment. Uh, there's the uh, sitting lieutenant governor deciding to run against uh, the sitting governor, uh, the Democrats in the House who were uh, who pushed the impeachment through, uh, put their full slate ahead. Uh, I wanted to ask you what your message to the community is amid all of the politics at play uh, at the legislature at the moment. Well, Tom, we are the Republican Party. We are a party, we are a family, and we focus on the positive uh, we focus on what we can do to um, refine solutions to what matters are that we have, what our challenges are. So we don't put out anything negative. Um, we don't, forgive me for saying, but we don't waste our time accommodating any negativity from the other camp but we just focus on what is positive and what we can do for the people and the Marianas. Inner well, did you wanna jump in there? Uh, Vice, I think Vice could probably jump in and uh, I'll come sure. after him. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> you know, we are a party of inclusion. Um, we have some very strong women. We have some, uh, uh, you know, very strong. I mean, I'm I'm uh, a Manhoven member, and I and I'm on the vice I'm the vice president uh, of the GOP, and so you know, as as a, a new member, we really want to share the same sentiment that uh, Ralph and Vinny have always had in their heart, which is is a lot of love and unity. Um, you know, one of our our um, statements or our, our one of our, our our things that are coming out is basically together stronger. And, and that's really what we want to focus on is, is just kind of the task at hand. And yeah, there's a, been a lot of mudslinging, but we want to just stay positive and just have a good time. Yeah, if I can add to that, Thomas, thanks, Vice and Prez. I mean, you can see by the governor's recent response and thinking uh, in the link, if I'm not mistaken, you asked the hard question, Tomas, and, and he didn't retort back with hitting. He basically uh, stayed on the high road and, and he passed on a message of, you know, Ungu Naidza. And so if you go to any of our functions, we don't spend, like the president said, uh, a whole lot of time or any time uh, talking negatively about the challengers. Instead, we bring out this message of unification and healing and what the party's going to do going forward into the 22 elections and, and thereafter. 
And what's the strategy moving forward? Uh, it's not news to you all that this is the first time in, in, in a long time uh, that there's a democratic bloc uh, at play. Uh, do you have a strategy moving forward and how to deal with uh, the Democrats from moving forward? If I could jump in, I, I, uh, the governor mentioned in his interview again that uh, he's going to do what's worked for him over the years uh, as a member of the House and the Senate as a lieutenant governor and governor. And that strategy is plain and simple on its face, going house to house and meeting people one on one and touching them uh, with who he is inside and his values. Again, uh, there may be two or three other challengers out there, but we're undeterred. Uh, the message is clean. It's simple. Shane's going to bring a whole new dynamic to this strategy in terms of social media and Candace and the Republican team on the ground are just going to do what they do best, which is touching the people's hearts uh, one on one and on the ground. And I wanted to ask about up and down the ticket, uh, if there's any announcements or, or plans there. Uh, obviously, the governor's seat is just one of many seats up for election in November. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, the entire ticket that you're proposing? Sure, Press, oh, go ahead. Okay, so we are looking to fill our candidates. Um, of course, we would like to um, give our precinct chairs the courtesy of um, doing their part, their, their part to filling our slate and and, um, and yeah, so so like the the president was saying, <clears throat> you know, our platform has not come out yet, um, but we will. It it will come out. But we are we are filling our slate, and we want to take the opinions of of our slate candidates, you know, and include them. Uh, we've we created a structure so that everybody can be very successful, and then we have we do have some core values that we want to extend. But we really need, we really want some new ideas. And, and uh, we feel that including uh, the other party members across all, all the different precincts and villages is going to be important. And so once that's done, we will be announcing all of our stuff. But of course, I mean, if you want, if you want to pinpoint a couple of things, love and unity is always going to be the, the first thing in the, in the soul of, of, of our campaign, um, you know, and also resilience and vision as well. So, uh, you know, coming from the GOP side, yeah, that's kind of what's going to happen. Uh, in our plans and but you you will be seeing it thomas pretty soon you can also build upon the fact thomas that we have solid incumbents uh senate president jude hoff schneider folks in the house like angel demo pond uh, you can just go down we have a great candidate for mayor on this uh saipan cnmi you know, block and congressman lee pond and we're 100 behind him and so we're going to campaign on what we've always campaigned on and that's uh resilience and vision uh, the people are going to see that you have a slate of experience, educated, and folks who are in touch with this community, who care a lot about their culture, and who live it day to day. And uh, can we talk a little bit about some of the priorities of the campaign in terms of what you'll be um, pushing out uh, under uh, Go Governor Torres's administration? Uh, what are some of the highlights uh, that you will be presenting to the public uh, to make the case that he should be reelected? So some of the highlights will be the um, supporting our retirees to making sure that they receive their pension at 100% and to continue to build our economy and to better the lives of our people in the Marianas. And if I can add into that a little bit, uh, Tom, uh, we're looking at some other industries as well to try to bring to the CNMI. Um, especially technological stuff. Um, and then uh, this hasn't been kicked around yet, but it is being kicked around a little bit in the back door is like maybe some space stuff as well. Um, you know, we do have a location here in the middle of the ocean and we're, we, we're a prime uh, location for a lot of things, um, whether it's different development in federal side or other, other avenues, but we are looking at some really out of the box um, uh, strategies, but the, one of the most important first and foremost is to grow the economy, because we understand that growing the economy will solve a lot of other issues, such as job security, increase in pay, you know, of course, pension and some other things like that for our retirees have been the main focus, but also growing and, and being more dynamic as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Shane hit something on the head that's unique. You know, Governor Torres uh, in this administration, the Torres administration was able to get cybersecurity firms to invest in the area. 
Uh, we know that we have uh, well over $20 million to invest in infrastructure, which would include a robust broadband uh, technology infrastructure that will open the doors, as Shane alluded to, for high tech. Uh, something the governor hasn't announced, but thank you, Shane. It's good that you kind of let it out. Uh, he's going to be considering the space industry. There's a lot of interest in that. And I do want to leave, uh, I, I do want to leave this with the listenership. You know, Governor Torres was the first in the union, if I'm not mistaken, to have created the travel bubble for Korea. We have senior executives in Washington, D.C. right now who have arrangements to meet with Department of State, Department of the Interior, Department of Commerce to talk about extending the travel bubble to Japan. So we're going to continue to build on what's been working for this economy and the people of the Commonwealth, tourism, tourism, tourism. But on top of that, I think you're right, Shane technology and uh, cottage industries as the president alluded to as well. Just wanted to follow up on the space point because I think that will catch uh, many people's attention. <laughs> Are you talking about like a government operation, a private partnership? I know it hasn't been announced yet, but uh, I can't let that go. Uh, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't think we're going to get into the business of building rockets, <laughs> but no, I'm going to keep you baited. I will tell you this, uh, that there's promise should this work out. Again, there's no commitments, but what I can tell you firmly and unequivocally is that the administration has been approached by one or more uh, interested parties that are uh, U.S. corporations that utilizing this, the landmass that we have here for low impact space operations. I'm not talking about launching a space shuttle here, I'm talking about low impact space operations that will introduce new, better paying jobs. But maybe that'll give you an opportunity to come back and talk to Governor Torres in the weeks ahead. Yes, thanks. Thanks for clarifying that. And I did want to ask, uh, talk about jobs and ARPA a little bit. Uh, like many of the nation's governors, uh, federal funding uh, is pouring in like uh, no other time before, also in a unique time in our, you know, in the pandemic of our lifetime. Uh, is, uh, does the party have a view in terms of, uh, you know, spending those funds uh, and hiring or, or, uh, or, or not? Or wh what are some of the, um, uh, you know, outlooks there on your, on your end as the GOP? So I, I can take that. Um, yeah, I, the GOP, you know, we, we understand that, of course, uh, the administration and, and what they're deciding to do um, with, with the money is kind of more uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, right? But the GOP's wish is for, for, of course, to utilize this money to create jobs and create new avenues for people uh, in, in the, you know, we, that's, that's what we need. We, we need more security. We need more uh, jobs. We need to continue to drive that force. And if the federal money is coming in, we definitely want to utilize ARPA to create those avenues, right? But administratively, at the end of the day, it is really up to uh, the governor to make those choices. Uh, and Will can probably have a little bit more insight as to you know what the strategic planning is currently. Uh, but in the future, we definitely want to continue to utilize that um, and, and utilize those funds to, to better the economy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks. Uh, Prez, you want to jump in? Otherwise, I could provide two or three details. Go ahead, Pam. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, you know, uh, Tomas, that was Shane, right? And he's a nominee for the Small Business Person of the Year. And so, you know, he's been an invaluable member of the GOP board. I can tell you this much that in a couple weeks, not, not even months, the governor will be announcing a small to mid-sized business boost program that's designed to infuse anywhere from five to $15 million into the local economy to allow small to mid-sized businesses to start up and sustain their operations. A major priority of the Torres Sablan administration is gonna be growing exports, uh, gonna be looking at things relative to food sovereignty and having people uh, with the tools and, and the capital needed to start a business for themselves. We know that uh, the government is not the solution to all things. And anybody who believes it is, is grossly mistaken and, and we definitely doesn't understand the complexities of this economy. And so thank you, Shane, for that. And the Republicans have always believed in small to mid-sized business as the engine of growth. All right, I wanted to wrap up here by asking you uh, about the slogan, uh, the uh, independent Republican ticket is rebuilding trust. Uh, the Sablon Staffler ticket is trusted leadership and the scene of my GOP is together stronger. What does that mean? Um, a united um, force uh, together with our supporters, together we are stronger. All right, thank you so much. Is there anything else anyone would like to add before we uh, wrap up here? Vice. 
Nice. Yeah, maybe I could just um, say a couple words. You know, I really like to thank you, Thomas and uh, KUAM, for having us on today. Um, you know, it's it's great to to have such a strong and, and young board that is uh, coming and moving forward for the GOP party. Um, you know, we we definitely are together stronger. And, and when we talk about our, our, our slogan of together stronger or resilience and vision is just to to stop all the division and to move forward unified uh, with one goal and one mission, and that's to support the people that support us. At the end of the day, that's really what we want. Uh, you know, we want to continue to grow this economy and continue to grow uh, our people and continue to put ourselves on the map uh, on the worldwide and global scale. So once again, thank you very much for your time and we appreciate it. Well said. I, I just want to add that there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm in this election with the Republican Party. And uh, we welcome you. It's the party of inclusion, as my president and vice president said. And I look forward to seeing you at our functions in the days and weeks and months ahead. Uh, thank you so much, Thomas and KOAM, for uh, giving the privilege to the Republican Party of the Commonwealth uh, to share their thoughts and their views on the election for 2022.